Hi, my name is some average anime fan, and I'm just a YouTuber with very low subscribers and a man who creates anime shit posts and who likes Shira. Recently, I learned of the one villainous scene challenge a bit too late, and I decided to look up some of his content, mainly focusing on villains for movies, games, anime, animated shows. Though after scrolling, I noticed one thing. No one made a video pertaining to Shira, and again, I love Shira. And after a while with no Shira content, I realized I had to do it myself. But I want to talk a scene that's truly so villainous, heartbreaking, and traumatizing from the Shira series: Catra's therapy session. But before we can get started on that. I need to talk about Catra. Catra is the deuteragonist of the series, if not also one of the acting antagonists in Shira, as she climbs through the ranks from cadet to force captain to force commander to prove once and for all that she is better than everyone else, and to prove she is better than her longtime friend Adora and Shira. And all of it started with a broken promise from her friend Adora. Not Shira, but Adora. A promise to leave together, to leave everything, an organization that doesn't give a crap if Catra ever died, ever got hurt, an organization that only favored someone else, leaving her alone, jealous. But no matter what happened, Adora was willing to stay with her, no matter what happens. It doesn't matter what they do to us, you know. You look out for me, and I look out for you. Nothing really bad can happen as long as we have each other. Surprise. But she did leave her, left her for a new life, a destiny forced upon Adora to defeat the Horde, to become a hero of Etheria, gaining new allies, becoming a symbol of hope, which seemingly did not include Catra. Adora didn't just break their promise; she betrayed her. Leaving her behind at that same organization, who never gave a crap if she died, got hurt. But this time, without Adora, she received most of the blowback of her consequence, and to face her abuser, almost seemingly alone. Easy catch. Adora's not here to protect you.、Anymore. But near the moment she was going to get killed, she was given a promotion and, respectively, more power. But with her achievements alone, it still wasn't enough. Shadow Weaver still wanted Adora. She was needed for something, some plan, and Catra was used as a means to an end, as she always was. And she got sick of it. I am so much stronger than anyone ever thought. I wonder what I could have been if I'd gotten rid of you sooner. And that was the moment where she believed things can or could go her way. Her abuser gone, her friend now a clear enemy, and appears to get the trust of Hordak, respect from her peers, and power over herself. But so it seems, she still needs to prove herself. You and me, we don't need anyone. Forget them all. No one matters. Nothing matters but this mission. You want to prove yourself? Prove your worth, then do it. You and I are going to conquer Etheria, and then, and then they'll all see. And over time, she became her own villain. She became Shadow Weaver, if not worse. And she had no one left to blame, no one but herself. She continued to gain more power to the point where she physically overworked herself to the point of exhaustion. And believed that one misstep, she would be ultimately responsible. And in the end, she does. Hey, Catra. Now let's talk about Double Trouble. If I were to describe him, he identifies as non-binary, but foremost, a shapeshifter, a trickster, deceiver, liar. But more importantly, doesn't mean a thing if you can't be them emotionally. It's an art. Double Trouble doesn't deceive people for political gain, but the thrill to understand their characters, their psyche, their flaws, what makes the characters seemingly break. 
Double Trouble almost seemingly loves the thrill to just break people, to divide them. It was one of the things that allowed Catra and Double Trouble to form an almost friendly relationship with each other. However, even if their friendship was mainly friendly, it was also contractual. Double Trouble didn't just deceive the princesses, but also Catra. To deceive Catra because Glimmer offered to pay him more. Now, fast forward, the princesses are attacking, Hordak is trying to fucking kill her, everything is going to shit, all because of her and her actions that drove her friends away. Which leads to this scene. Catra's fears come back to haunt her, and the people she hurt come back to haunt her. Not only does Double Trouble describe Catra's character perfectly and psychoanalyzes her, because again, he is an actor, and actors not just act, but seemingly become the character. He single handedly breaks her. They didn't believe. They didn't trust you. Didn't need you. <laughs> Left you. But did you ever stop to think? Maybe they're not the problem? It's you. And another thing I love about this scene, this moment, is Double Trouble transforms into Catra. As a visual metaphor that she was hurt, but she hurt and drove others away of her own volition. Shadow Weaver never forced her to kill Adora. Kordak never made Catra betray Entrapta. No one forced her to leave the only friend she ever knew and had and seemingly loved. It was all her and her alone. She had the power, but at what cost? And this could have been the end of her character arc. This could have been the end for her. Broken, defeated, betrayed, alone, left with no one to blame but herself. And now under the rule under Horde Prime, who not only is worse than Shadow Weaver and Hordak, but seemingly the leader of a A cult bent on world domination, annihilation, keeping her only as a means to an end, and it seems like Catra is destined to repeat everything again. But this time, she has no one to help her. But maybe she hadn't truly lost everything. She still had Adora. Adora never broke her promise. And she just didn't realize till now that Adora still believed in her. I'm always gonna be your friend. And she wanted to do the one good thing that she believed could only do in her whole life. She gave the rebellion and Adora hope. She didn't think she could be saved, but despite every terrible thing she did, Adora still saved her. To me, this series wasn't just a girl show. It was a show about finding your own destiny, that your destiny is not set in stone. Adora believed that her destiny Ashira is to be a hero for Etheria, to be the hope for Etheria. Die for Etheria and unable to save herself, something that Prime explicitly exploits within her. However, Catra didn't want her to give up, and Catra is the one who saves her and saves everyone.
And while making this script, it reminded me of a quote that a villain is just a victim whose story hasn't been told. And she was a villain. She did terrible things. However, it was because of her trauma from Shadow Weaver, believing she had to prove herself to be loved and valued. But she had to learn she was loved by Adora, not just because of her achievements or her abilities, but for the sake that Adora just loved her. Catra fell as a villain, but she rose as a hero, helped the rebellion win, saved Shira, saved Etheria, the universe, and in the end. She got what she truly wanted, love, and Adora, all because of a much-needed therapy session. Oh, and I uh, almost forgot, if you haven't watched she yet, I suggest you watch it now. <laughs>